Hello, and welcome to Storytelling with Mr. Bunjo Butler. We're coming to you live from the Orleans branch of the Enoch Pratt Free Library. This is part of Summer Break Baltimore, so make sure you check out more at prattlibrary.org. Without further ado, Mr. Bunjo Butler. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I hope all is well. Uh, I'm going to start off today. First thing I would like to know is how many of you like to hear stories? Raise your hand. All right, that's going to make it easier then. That's going to make it easier. In order for me to share stories, I always ask for three things. Number one, I ask that you lend me your ears. Number two, I ask that uh, let the storyteller share his or her tale. If you have any questions, we'll take them at the end of the program. And the third thing I do is I get rid of all the negative storytelling germs that might be up in the air. And what are the negative storytelling germs I hear you say? It's those people that don't want to do number one and number two. This is how we deal with them. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. So here's what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to help the bubble out. Y'all repeat after me. And you can use your hands and your voices. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. After me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stories come from. 
somebody share with me where the stories come from. Books. That's a wonderful answer. We in the library. You hit it. You nailed it. You know what I'm saying? Out of sight. Also, your family shares stories with you. Stories could come off the television, off the radio, right? You can you 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 can uh, uh, read the newspaper stories. I want to tell you where stories came from. Once upon a time, all the stories in the world belong to Inyame. Let me hear you say Inyame. Inyame. And Inyame kept those stories in a golden box next to his royal stool. One day, a non the spider, who is sometimes man and sometimes animal, he spun a web up to the sky god's palace. And he went before the sky god. When Inyame saw Anante, he said, uh, Anante, what you doing around my throne so early in the morning? Nazi said, I have come to buy your stories. And Yame looked at a Nazi. He said, How can one so small, so small, so small, such as yourself, hope to pay the price for my stories? Anase asked a very logical question. He said, how much are your stories? And Yame, the sky god said, if you want to buy my stories, you must do three things for me. Number one, you must bring to me Osibo, the leopard with the terrible, terrible teeth. Number two, you must bring to me Emboro, the harness with the terrible, terrible sting of fire. And number three, you must bring to me Emosha, the fur whom no man could see. Well, Nancy thought about that for a little while, y'all. He thought about that. He said, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, what he done shared with me? That could get me hurt. Or, 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 or I might get killed. Uh, oh my goodness. What uh, a Nazi wanted those stories. So he said to Inyame, Yes, Inyame, I shall pay your price. And with that, he left Inyame's palace. He came back down his web back down to earth and he started through the forest in search of the price of the sky god stories after he walked for a while y'all he came to a clearing that meant that there were no tall trees no high grass and you could see from one end of the clearing to the other at the end of that clearing Anase saw Osibo, the leopard with the terrible, terrible teeth. Let me tell you what he saw, y'all. He saw this great big cat about this long. He weighed about 250 pounds. He had real sharp teeth and, and real sharp claws. And when Anase looked at him, Anase said, oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, uh, he gonna hurt me, he gonna hurt me. Oh, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Anase knew what he had to do. He had to use his head. He had to come up with a plan. 
This is the plan he came up with. He called out to Osibo. Hey! Osibo! Osibo looked up at Anase and Osibo said, mm. You know, the first thing Osibo thought of, he thought of his stomach. He looked up at Anase and he said, Growl! Come here to me, Anase. I'm going to eat you for lunch. Anase said, Well, if that will come to be, then it will come to be. But first, let us play the binding, binding game. You see, Anase knew that Osibo liked to play games, but he had never heard of the binding, binding game. So he said, Osibo said, uh, well, what's the binding, binding game? Anase said, well, that's this game where I tie you up. Then I untie you. And then you can tie me up. Oh, Sibo got this big smile on his face. He said, yeah, buddy. He to himself. He said, yeah, buddy. I'm going to play this game. I'm going to play this game. Because when it's my turn to tie up Anase, I'm going to eat him up. Yes, Anase, let's play the binding, binding game. With that, Anase went over to a tree, y'all. And from that tree, he cut five vines. Vines are like ropes. And he called to Osibo. He said, Osibo, lay down. Osibo laid down on his back. Nase went up to Osibo and he picked up one paw and he tied Osibo by that one paw. He stepped around. He tied a second paw. With that third vine, he tied the third paw. With that fourth vine, he tied the fourth palm. With that fifth vine, he put all of Osibo's legs together and he tied him up. He tied him up. He tied him up so that he couldn't get loose in a million years. Anase looked down at Osibo and he said, ha, 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 you fool. Now you shall await the sky guard. He picked up Osibo and took Osibo over to a nearby tree and he hung him from that tree. And he went further into the forest in search of the sky guard stories. After he walked for a while, y'all, he came upon the nest of Emboro the hornets with the terrible, terrible sting of fire. Now, because Anase knew stories, he knew about Emboro. He knew that if those hornets would sting him, it would cause the blood to rush through his body and his body would start to swell and it would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bam! It would burst. Anase knew he couldn't let his body burst. He knew what he had to do. He had to use his head. He had to come up with a plan. This is the plan he came up with. He went over to a banana tree and cut a fawn off that banana tree. And the leaf on the banana tree looked just like an umbrella. He went and he got himself a gourd. And he filled that gourd with water. He took his umbrella-like leaf and his gourd full of water and he tiptoed over to the nest of Emboro. 
He took some of the water in that gourd and he poured it on top of his umbrella like leaf and water was just coming down it. He took some of the water in that gourd and he poured it on top of his head and water was coming all down on his face. It looked like it was raining hard outside. He took the rest of that water and he went over and poured it into the nest of Emboro. The water came into the hornet's nest and the hornet was flying around. You could hear him. They were flying around. Their clothes was floating around. Their furniture was floating around. Everything was floating around. They didn't know what they were going to do. Anase said, quick, and borrow, come, get beneath my umbrella, fly into my gorge so that your wings won't get all messed up. And for some reason, that worked. And Boro, the hornets, flew into Anante's gourd, one at a time. And when the last one went in, Anante crumbled up the leaves on that banana tree, and he took them in. He stuffed it into the top of that gourd so that none of the hornets could get free. He held that up, that gourd up there, and he said, ha, 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 ha. Now you shall await the sky guard. And he took that gourd over to the tree where he had hung Osibo, the leopard with the terrible, terrible teeth. And he went deeper into the forest. He came to a place, y'all. He came to a place where two roads crossed. And at this road, where the two roads crossed, at this place, there was a large, beautiful tree that had all the colors of the rainbow. And now I say knew that Emosha, the fellow whom no man could see, would walk past this tree. Now, no man could see Emosha because she was invisible. Anase had to catch somebody that was invisible. He knew what he had to do, y'all. He had to use his head. He had to come up with a plan. This is the plan he came up with. He went over to a tree. And from that tree, he carved two things. Number one, he carved himself a life-like doll. Made it look just like a baby. He set it down. The second thing he carved from that tree, the second thing he carved from that tree was a bowl. And he took that bowl and he put it between that baby's knee. He went over to another tree. And from that tree, he gathered this icky, sticky, gooey, gummy stuff. And he took that icky, sticky, gooey, gummy stuff and put it all over that doll's body, except in between the baby's knees where that bowl was. He then went out into the forest, over to the uh, a garden, and he dug up some yams. He took those yams over to where the bowl was and he pounded those yams and he pounded those yams and he pounded those yams until they turned into a pudding. He put those yams in that bowl and then he went and from another tree he cut a vine, a long vine. 
he tied it to the back of that baby's head. He went, held on to that vine, and went and hid in the bushes where no one could see him. Just like he thought, up the road comes <clears throat> Moshe, the fur whom no man can see. When she walked past the baby, because she had manners, she said, uh, good morning, gum baby. That gum baby couldn't talk. She said, uh, I said, good morning, gum baby. That gum baby said nothing. <clears throat> Most of saying to herself, yeah, I might let you slide on that tip. But, uh, can I have some of your yams? And from behind the bushes where Nante was hidden, he tugged on that vine that was attached to that baby's head. And the baby's head went up and down like that. And most of thought that meant yes. So she reached down, she picked up the bowl of yams, and she ate some of those yams. She didn't eat all the yams just some of them, and she placed the bowl back between the baby's knees. And because she had manners, because she was raised well, she said, thank you, gum baby. That gum baby couldn't talk. She said, I said, thank you, gum baby. Gum baby said nothing. Emotion said, I don't know what kind of parents you got, but when somebody says thank you, you're supposed to say you're welcome. If you don't say I'm welcome to have them yams, you're going to force me to smack you upside your crying place. That come baby couldn't talk. Emotion wound up and she said, Bye and slapped that baby right upside her face. And immediately, her hand stuck in that icky, gooey, gummy stuff that Anansi had put on that baby. And Moshe said, hey, gum baby, you got me wrong, gum baby. If you don't let me go, I'm going to slap you again. That gum baby couldn't let go. And Moshe wound up, she said, pow you Man, both hands were stuck to that baby's face. And Moshe said, oh, gum, baby. Oh, gum, baby. Oh, this ain't gonna work. If you don't let me go, I'm gonna kick you. That baby couldn't let go. Moshe said, bam! Man, both hands and her foot were stuck to the, to the baby's body. She said, oh, gum, baby. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hurt you, gum, baby. I'm gonna hurt you. And she kicked at her again. Now, both hands and both feet were stuck to the gum baby's body. From behind the bushes where Nancy was hidden, he came out and he said, ha, 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 you fool. That gum baby wasn't bothering you. He picked up Emotion and he took Emotion over to the tree where he had hung Osibo the leopard with the terrible, terrible teeth. And Boro, the hornet with the terrible, terrible sting of fire. And he spun a web around Emosha, Osibo, and Emboro. He spun a web around him. Spun his web back up to the Sky God's palace. He went before the Sky God. And he said, here is the price for your story. And Yame couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't believe his eyes, but true to his word, he reached down and he picked up his golden box of stories and he handed them to Anansi. Anansi came back down his web, came back down to earth, and he opened those box of stories and he spread those stories 
to the four corners of the world. Like some of the stories I'm going to share with you today. And that is the end of that tape. <laughs> All right. I want y'all to repeat after me. Ba, ba, ba. 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 Because he was his mother and father's baby boy. That wasn't why he was special. Malik was not special because he had a big brother and a big sister. That wasn't why he was special. Malik was not special because he was cute. Most three-year-old babies are cute. Malik was special because as soon as that boy was born, that boy could read. Yeah, I know y'all don't believe me. I know y'all don't believe me. I know y'all don't believe me, but he could read because when his mother, well, do that, when his mother was carrying him around in her stomach, she read to him. His father read to him. His sister and his brother read to him. His uncle, his aunt read to him. The lady up the street and the man down the street did what, y'all? Read. read to him. So that as soon as he was born, that boy could read. And he loved to read, too. He loved to read. He liked reading fiction books. He liked reading non-fiction books. He liked reading chapter books. He liked reading picture books. His favorite book, his favorite book in the whole wide world was a book of Proverbs 
that his granddaddy had written for him. Proverbs are wise sayings, like the same thing that'll make you laugh will make you cry. And your parents, your teachers, elders in the community can see more laying on the ground than you can see standing in the top of the tallest tree. He loved that book. He loved that book. He loved that book so much, if he didn't have his book or his bottle, he would let you know. He'd be crying. He loved that book. He loved reading about his people. He loved reading about his history. He loved reading about his culture. Because he did so much reading, he knew. Readers rule. Man, let me tell you about Malik. His people lived in Philadelphia. He came down here for Philadelphia with his mother and father, his sister and brother, and they met with a real estate agent. Came down here to Baltimore, and she was going to show them some houses. It was on a Saturday. It was hot, just like it is out here. She took them around looking at houses. And no matter what they looked at, nah, they didn't see anything that, that touched them. The real estate agent said, all right, I got one more house to show you. I got one more house to show you. Do you want to see it? Malik's mother and father said, yeah, we might as well. We've been looking this long. We might as well look at this last one. She said, it's a great big house. It's in the middle of the city, high up on this hill. You'll love it. She took them to that house. Malik's mother and father, sister, brother, and Malik went into the house. That house had three floors. They looked at all the rooms on the first floor. They went up a flight of stairs to the second floor. Looked at all the rooms on the second floor. They went up another flight of stairs and came up to the third floor. There was only one room on that third floor. That was the 13th room. It covered the whole top of the house. Malik's mother and father and the real estate agent pushed the door and went in. And as soon as Malik's mother walked in, she said, oh boy, I love this bad boy. I love this bad boy. She said, I love this. Well, we can buy this. We can buy this. Let me tell you what she saw, y'all, why she loved it. In that 13th room, they had windows all around and you could look out the windows and you were so high up that no matter which window you looked out of you could see over top of trees and the people looked small and the cars looked small she said oh boy i love this boy we can buy this house come on we can buy this house come on let's let's go downstairs and and, and and uh, fill out the paper. Come on, let's go downstairs and fill out the paper. Well, as they started to move toward the door, Malik's mother noticed that Malik needed to have his diaper changed. She had him tied around her with a pretty piece of African cloth, and the baby sat in the middle so she would have her hands free. She noticed that he needed to have his diaper changed. So she took his book and bottle and put it on a desk 
that was inside the room. She laid her fabric down. She changed Malik's diapers, put them in her diaper bag, picked them back up, tied them back around her. They went downstairs. Soon as she got downstairs, Malik started hollering. Ah! 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 Malik's mother said, Dang, I forgot that boy's book and bottle. She said, uh, only son, only son, no, firstborn, firstborn. Come here, man. Come here. Go upstairs and get your brother's book and his bottle. He's about to drive me crazy. Firstborn didn't want to go upstairs, but he knew he had to do what his mother told him to do. He went up those three flights of steps. He came up to that 13th room. He pushed the door open. He walked inside. As soon as he got inside, he heard this great big noise. It said, I am the ghost with the one black. Ah, if you come into this room, you will surely die. This scared him. He went running down steps. He ran into the living room and he tried to tell his mother and father and the real estate agent and his sister what was going on. But he was so pumped up, they didn't know what he was talking about. Malik was crying, driving my mother crazy. Uh, Malik's mother say, where your brother's, where your brother's book and bottle? Where your brother's book and bottle? He said, she said, boy, what you talking about? Where's your brother's book and bottle? He said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, she said, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, only daughter, only daughter. Come here, come here, come here. Go upstairs and get your brother's book and bottle. He about to drive me crazy. And I don't know what your brother's talking about. Only daughter. She didn't want to go either, but she had to do what her, her mother told her to do. So she went up those stairs. Came up to the 13th room, pushed the door, squee! She stepped inside. As soon as she stepped inside, she heard this great big voice. It said, I am the ghost with the one black eye. If you come into this room, you will surely die. This scared only daughter. She would run downstairs. She ran in the living room and she tried to tell her mother what was going on. And Malik was crying. Malik was making all this noise. Malik's mother said, What is you doing? Where is his book and bottle? She said, I'm going to give me I'm going to she said, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. Where is this book and bottle? She said, I'm coming out with you. She said, Lord, can somebody get this boy's book and bottle? Malik's father said, I'll get it. I'll get it. And I'll deal with you too when I come back. Malik's father went up those three flights of stairs, came up to the 13th room. He pushed the door, squee! He stepped inside. As soon as he stepped inside, he heard this great big voice. It said, y'all know what it said. Repeat after me. I! And the, and the ghost with the one black eye. With the one black eye. 
if you come into this room, if you come into this room, you will surely die. You will surely die. This scared Malik's father. He went running downstairs. He ran. He ran into the living room. He grabbed his wife. He grabbed his daughter. He grabbed his son. He grabbed the real estate agent. He was going to protect them like a man is supposed to do. He was heading out that door, going out that door. He walked toward the door, and Malik jumped up out his mother's arms, got down on his hands and knees, and he started crawling. And he crawled up those three flights of stairs. And he came to that 13th room. He pushed the door. Squeak! He crawled inside. And as soon as he got inside, he heard this great big voice. It said, I am the ghost with the one black eye. If you Coming to this room, you will surely die. Malik crawled further into that room. He stood up and he said the first sentence that he had ever said in his life. He said, you can be the ghost with two black eyes if you don't give me back my book and my bottle. The, the power and the determination in Malik's voice scared that ghost. That ghost went run down steps. He ran in the living room. He ran past Malik's mother and father and that real estate agent and Malik's sister and brother. He ran out of the hall out of the door, up the hill, never to be seen again. My man Malik came crawling back downstairs. He had his book in one hand, his bottle in the other. He got up into his mother's arms. He took one swig off his bottle, <laughs> held that book up in the air, and he said, readers rule and knowledge of self is power. Right. And that is the end of that tale. All right. Hey. Y'all repeat after me. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, Because I want y'all to tell me the truth. You can raise your hand. Let me know how many of you like to take five extra minutes in bed in the morning before you get up. Raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Oh, you don't like it, huh? Huh? Yeah, uh -huh. You up? Oh, well, you ain't like Pee Wee then. <laughs> Pee Wee like to take 
15 extra minutes in bed in the morning. It was like when his mother called him. She said, Pee Wee! Pee Wee! Get up, boy! Go in that bathroom! Wash your face! Brush your teeth! Comb your hair! Put on your clothes! Come down here! Eat your breakfast! And get out of here and go to school on time! Pee Wee didn't move, y'all. He laid back. Made so soft. He said, <laughs> She calls upstairs again. Hey, Pee Wee! Get up, boy! Go in that bathroom! Wash your face! Brush your teeth! Comb your hair! Put on your clothes! Come down here! Eat your breakfast! And get out here and go to school on time! He was still in move, y'all. He lay back. She said, Hey, Pee Wee, you better get your butt up, boy. This time, my man Pee got up. He jumped up. And Pee Wee was, was lazy, but he wasn't jive. He went into the he went into the bathroom. Went over to the wash basin. He turned on. Some hot water. Oh, it was a little too hot. So he turned on some cold water. Got it just right. He took his face cloth and a bar of soap, made him some soap suds. And because he was so short, he had to stand on his tiptoes to see in the mirror. He stood on his tiptoes and he looked in the mirror. He said, Let me tell you what Pee Wee saw. He saw this great big green spot. It had big red eyes. It had big yellow teeth. And something real nasty was dripping off of them. It only had six legs. But it had a tennis shoe on each leg. <laughs> People say, wow, I'm going to sneak up on this thing. I ain't never seen nothing like this before in my life. He got down real low. He came up real slow. He came up, up, and up, and ah! He saw this great big green spider. It had big red eyes. It had big yellow teeth. Something real nasty dripping off of it. Had Six legs, but he had a tennis shoe on his leg, and Pee Wee just started screaming. Pee Wee started screaming. His mother, she was downstairs. She heard Pee Wee screaming. She said, Pee Wee, Pee Wee, what's wrong with you, boy? Pee Wee said, Come, look in the bathroom, look in the bathroom. His mother came upstairs. Boy, why are you making all this noise? People said, look in the bathroom, look in the bathroom. She went in the bathroom. She looked around. She ain't see anything. So Pee Wee said, look in the mirror. Pee Wee's mother went over to the mirror. She looked in the mirror. She said, because what did Pee Wee's mother see? She saw this great big green spider. It had big red eyes. It had big yellow teeth. And something real nasty was dripping off of them. It had six legs. It had a tennis shoe on each leg. Pee Wee's mother said, whoa, what is this? I ain't never seen nothing like this before in my life. She said, I'm going to sneak up on this thing. She got down real low. Came up real slow. She came up. Now, to the other side. Came up. Now, she went up right to the front of the mirror. She looked in the mirror. She said, 
Wow! Because what did Pee Wee's mother see? Y'all repeat it after me. She saw this great, great big green, green spot. Green. It had big green. red eyes. Green. It had green. big green. yellow green. teeth. And it was something real nasty coming dripping off, off of them. them. It only had six legs. But it had a tennis shoe on each leg. People's mom said, oh, oh my goodness, I ain't never seen nothing like this before in my life. She started screaming. She started screaming. Oh, oh, oh. And, and, and her husband, he heard his wife and Pee Wee screaming. He called upstairs. He said, baby. Baby, baby, what's wrong, baby? <laughs> Pee Wee's mother and Pee Wee said, It's a great green green spot. It got me red. It got me <laughs> Pee Wee's father said, I don't know what you talked about. He came upstairs. He said, What's going on? What are y'all doing? Pee Wee's mother and Pee Wee said, Look in the bathroom. Look in the bathroom. Pee Wee knew that that spider was in trouble because his father wasn't scared of nothing. Pee Wee's father went into the bathroom and he looked around. <laughs> and he didn't see anything. So Pee Wee's mother and Pee Wee said, What y'all? Pee Wee's father went over to the mirror. Pee Wee's father said, Yeah! Because what did he see? He saw this great big green spider. It had big red eyes, it had big yellow teeth. And something real nasty was, was dripping off of them. Yeah. It only had six, six legs, legs, but it had a tennis six shoe on each legs. leg. People's father said, Whoa, what is this? I ain't never seen nothing like this before in my life. People's father said, I'm going to sneak up on this thing. I'm going to sneak up on this thing. He got down real low. He came up real slow. He came up and up and up and up and wow! He saw this great big green spider. It had big red eyes. It had big yellow teeth. It had something real nasty with dripping on them. It only had six legs, but it had a tennis shoe on each leg. People's father said, Whoa, what is this? What is this? Pee Wee's mother said, Bam! And she started running. Pee Wee said, Pee Wee's father said, Bam! He started running. Pee Wee said, Bam! Pee Wee's father said, Hey, Pee Wee! Hey, Pee Wee! Get up, boy! You heard your mother calling you. Pee Wee had been dreaming all the time. And that's the story of Pee Wee and the great big green spot. All right. We're going to do it like this, y'all. We've got five more minutes. We've got five more minutes. Say, yuck a chow. Say, I'm a Baltimore African talking drum because that's the way they do it. Where my people come from, where my people come from, where my people come from. I'm a praise singer, culture bringer, genealogist too. That's what an African talking drum do. Yakakatumba. Say Yakakatumba. 
say, the Kumba. I'm a Baltimore African talking drum, cause that's the way they do. Where my people come from? Where my people come from? Where my people come from? Historian, educator, and interpreter too. That's what the African talking drum do. Hey, Katumba. Hey, Katumba. I'm a Baltimore African talking drum, cause that's the way they do. Where my people come from, where my people come from, I bring you James Little song, Fathers too. That's what the African talking drum do. Katumba. Hey, Katumba. I'm a Baltimore African talking drum, cause that's the way they do. Where my people come from, where my people come from, where my people come from, I mediate, translate, I compose and advise. I'm a warrior strong and a spoke person too. That's what the African talking drum do. Hey, hey. And that is the end of those stories. Y'all be good. Watch yourselves and stay out of trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and join us at prattlibrary.org and on our social media channels for more programming. Have a great day.